Hello, everybody. Welcome back to worship. We are so glad to have you here with us again this week. And I just want, oh, um, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Um, last week, I kind of remember you having some trouble with this, but I just wanted to remind you. Okay, so our friends aren't here with us. I know. But they are here with us, okay? So, yeah, all of our friends are still there. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, no confusion this week. All right. Good to see you guys. All right. Tonight, we're going to talk about being thankful together. But first, we better light our candles. Did you guys come and get your candles? I have you found one at your house you could use? I, I think some of them didn't because there's a lot of candles out there. Then this is a great reminder to have you come pick up your fun candle at the church to light yeah. with us every week. Yes, for sure. All right, everybody. Either way, whether you get our candle or one from home, it's time to light our candles so that we're all here together. If everybody's ready to begin, let's start worship with a song.
Great song. Thank you, Beth. Good singing out there. Thank you, guys. So like Beth said, we're going to be focusing on being thankful during our time together here on Wednesdays. Um, we're in the month of November with the Thanksgiving holiday coming up. So what better time to consider things to be thankful for than now? So Beth, when you think about the holiday that we call Thanksgiving, what comes to your mind? Turkeys, family, pumpkin pie, togetherness, love, being thankful. I mean, everything. All of it. All of it. Good answers. Yeah, All right. When I think of Thanksgiving, like for some reason, the first thing that pops into my mind is the picture of a turkey, like this guy. I printed him out. He's, he's my guy. The, the turkey's like the official bird of Thanksgiving, right? So I just can't help but think of turkeys. So I wanted to hear from you guys, and so I asked this question on Facebook last week, and these are some of the things that you guys came up with. So family, there was, I got this cool arrow that I need to use. There was so much family that came up on that feed. Family, family, family time was one of the answers. That's always a good thing. Friends, they're the family that we choose, aren't they? We had pilgrims, yeah. And then all this good stuff in the middle. Pumpkin pie, turkey, stuffing, good food, too much food. Yep, guilty, guilty, guilty. Um, blessings. Ah, that was a good one. Blessings, gratitude, and a big old meal. That about wrapped it up, didn't it? One person said birthday celebrations, because I know there's one of you for sure out there who has a birthday just right before Thanksgiving. And blessings from God. That's kind of the winner, winner turkey dinner turkey here. Dinner. Yeah, blessings from God. That's what we're going to be talking about. Robin, you're a genius. You can read my mind. <laughs> all right. I love this list. I love this list. They are all great things. Thank you for sharing with me, you guys. I really appreciate that. And tonight we're going to focus on what the Bible says about thankfulness. But before we begin, let's join together for an opening prayer, okay? Can you guys warm those hands up, fold them, and will you pray with me? God, thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for our sins, and thank you for the many blessings you give. Give us understanding tonight as we learn what your word says about thankfulness. Amen. So the Bible tells us a lot about what we should be thankful for. First, in Colossians 2, verses 6 through 7, it says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Savior, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Those are some pretty good images in there. Imagine yourself a tree with roots growing into God. Or imagine God as being your foundation, like the foundation of a house. You need to build a house on a firm foundation, or it'll fall down eventually, won't it? So what the scripture reading is telling us is that when we are faithful to God and choose to follow and obey his commands, we will experience true thankfulness. Has there ever been a time in your life when you felt so full of thanks toward God that you could hardly stand it? Like it was overflowing out of your body like the scripture says? It can happen at different times in our lives for different reasons. Maybe your team won a game that you didn't think you were going to win. You didn't think you had a chance at it. Or maybe you finally got that promotion at work or a new job that you had been desperately hoping for. These are both big, exciting life events. And being thankful for them in a huge way seems like a pretty legitimate reaction, right? Have you ever thought about these times, though? Like that day that you were hanging out at the lake and the weather was amazing and you and your family were there swimming and water skiing. Like, have you ever had that moment during one of those days where you just stopped, looked around, and realized how perfect 
the day was, or even one of those brief moments where you look up at the sky and you see this beautiful sunset. Those are God moments. Moments when God is grabbing your attention in a special sort of way. I got to tell you guys, there are people who notice moments like these but can't appreciate them. And that's sad, but maybe they're too busy to take time to be thankful. Maybe they don't know God, so they don't know who to be thankful toward. Maybe their hearts are in a bad place and they're too filled with anger or resentment or hate to appreciate what's going on right in front of them. Knowing God, following God, learning about God, all of these things give you a head start if you will, toward having an appreciation for more things in life, to being more thankful for things than someone who maybe doesn't have a relationship with God. I've had people here in church tell me that they don't feel like they come to church often enough, or they come to me saying that they don't feel like they really know enough about God or the Bible. And you know what I tell them? You might have heard this from me before. I tell them, you're here now, and that's what matters. You are working on your relationship with him, and that's what matters. You know he's there, and that he's cheering for you every day, no matter what kind of day you have, and that's what matters. And that leads into our next Bible verse. This one comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Forever. And no matter what, every single day we wake up and we rise from our beds with the promise that God is going to love us through it. He is going to love us despite the fact that we don't even want to get out of the bed yet, maybe. He's going to love us even before we help our outlook on the day by eating a good breakfast or enjoying that first cup of coffee. He's going to love you when you're cranky with your mom for waking you up. He's going to love you when you're yelling at your child to get out of bed. Morning, noon, and night, God loves us through it all. And if that isn't something to be thankful for, I don't know what is. And he gives us the chance to be better every day, too. Every day that you wake up and rise from bed is a new chance to behave as God would want us to. A new chance to show others the love of God. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is written in the first book of Corinthians. God gives us victory over sin and death, and He did this by offering His Son's life up for us. He sent His Son Jesus to this earth to live and teach and die for us so that we can be saved from our sins. Jesus came to save us from ourselves when we call that person on the playground a mean name. Jesus came to save us from the way we judge others according to who they voted for in last week's election. Face it, friends, we sin every day. Some days they're smaller sins, and some days they are ridiculously huge. But knowing God, believing in God, learning about his commands and following them helps us to understand that because he sent his son to die for us, we're forgiven. We are forgiven. Isn't that wonderful to know? Isn't that something to be so thankful for? We are going to heaven someday because Jesus saved us from ourselves. Do you guys remember learning about Paul? He had a tough life, as you might recall. In 2 Corinthians, he writes, Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. 
I have faced dangers from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then, besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Wow. Paul had a lot on his plate. You would think that with a life like that, he might have given up on God. He might have stopped preaching and teaching about Jesus. He might have tucked himself away quietly in some small town to live a peaceful, worry-free life. But he didn't because he knew that God was with him. He knew that he was doing the right thing by obeying God and teaching others how to do the same. In 1 Thessalonians, he wrote, Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Remember that one, friends. Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. No matter what we're going through, being joyful and prayerful will help us to be thankful. In every aspect of our lives, we should strive to follow that advice and remember that true thankfulness comes from knowing Jesus and from experiencing God's love. I'm going to sing God is so good and I would love for your help. I might say snap your fingers. I might say clap your hands. I might say pat your knees or I might say stomp your feet. So listen up kids. First we'll start with some snaps. God is so
listening. <laughs> well, I think we've covered everything for the day. I think so. I wish you all a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. But before we go, it's time to do our benediction. You ready? Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Take care.